so students in today's video lecture we want to discuss the summary of practical criticism written by i a richards see in fact the whole story of new criticism begins with i a richards in the beginning of the 20th century richards who was born in 1893 and died in 1979 contributed immensely in several fields of literature and art he has earned popularity as a critic as a poet as a dramatist as a philosopher and what not he was the first critic who brought some basic element of scientific observation on the work of art okay see the the element of objectivity that we have in today's times was first initiated by i a richards in the beginning of the 20th century in fact many critics call him the critical consciousness of the modern age new criticism and the whole modern poetics derive the strength and power and inspiration from the important writings of i a richards he contributed by writing several important works in the field of literary criticism as you can see on the screen principles of literary criticism practical criticism coleridge on imagination the foundation of aesthetics and meaning of meaning these are the most important critical works written by i a richards but in today's lecture we want to see and examine the summary the several key points uh, expressed by i a richards in practical criticism see this practical criticism is a book which, which was published in 1929 and it is a kind of a record or documentation of the practical experiments which he conducted in his classrooms as a teacher as a professor of criticism in cambridge university c i a richards was teaching literary criticism to the undergraduate students and for several years he conducted some experiments some practical experiments of criticism with his students and he has recorded all his gatherings of all the findings of these experiments in this book practical criticism okay now this book is as i told you it is based on the practical experiments conducted in his classrooms okay so how did he conduct these experiments so he used to divide he he used to distribute the poems among his students with no evidence of authorship and no evidence of the period during which that particular poem or work of art was written see he gives a poem to the students but he doesn't tell the students who the poet is he doesn't even tell the students when the poem was first written or first published so the students were not familiar with the background of the poem okay they did not know about the poet they did not know about the time during which it was published so richards wanted to see how if you can if you isolate a work of art from the background of the poet how actually the students try to understand that poem so richard you know after so many experiments richards discovered that the most of the students failed to understand and analyze the poems they uh, either misread the poem or they uh, misinterpreted the poems he found that several factors are responsible for this misreading and he found that there are 10 important factors which sometimes lead to the misreading and misinterpretation of the work of art number 1 is sense 
so richards believed that you know sometimes some of the readers or students they found difficulty in getting the exact meaning the surface meaning of the poem large number of students okay uh, they failed to understand the meaning which the poet wanted to express they failed to make out its plain or superficial meaning so that was the first major problem which was encountered by the students in his classroom number 2 is missing the rhythm see when the poet writes poem he uses words and words have a particular movement or rhythm which uh, it is a silent rhythm which is sometimes misunderstood or sometimes totally missed by the reader so that was the second problem another problem that he discovered was understanding the use of imagery uh, in poetry when the poet makes use of visual imagery then when we read that poem we have some visual picture in our minds so what happens when the same poem is given to student a for example he has one visualization and the same poem which is given to student b he has another visualization he has another image so the image which the poet wanted to convey to the readers is not conveyed sometimes why because uh, visualization or understanding imagery is a personal thing right i understand one thing but you understand the same thing in a different manner so the images aroused in one mind is different from the other mind okay so that also is a problem so you cannot take the right judgment or you cannot analyze a particular work of art considering this factor also now the fourth important thing which he mentions in practical criticism is mnemonics you know richards argues that the reader's personal life experiences and his memories about those experiences you know they create problems for the readers to while understanding a work of art okay sometimes the reader tries to understand the poem in the light of his experiences see if i have one experience in my life and if i read that poem i have another uh, one meaning but if you read the same poem you, you derive to uh, you derive a different meaning why because you have a, some different experiences in your lives so that also creates problems uh, while analyzing or interpreting a work of art number 5 is stock responses sometimes the reader starts reading the poem with some preconceived ideology see everyone has his or her ideologies okay which are preconceived ideologies and we try to analyze that poem with that ideology which we have now the poet's ideology may be different okay so sometimes uh, our ideology uh, misguides our overall judgment of the work of art which we are reading number 6 is sentimentality sometimes what happens that some people are over sensitive people okay excessive emotions carried by the reader sometimes makes the reader stand on the edge of drowning in the pool of sentiments okay so when you become too much emotional when you become too much sentimental while reading a particular work of art sometimes you fail to understand the real meaning of that work of art so that is also a problem problem number 7 is inhibition and just opposite to the previous idea some people are highly sensitive people and on the other hand some people are hard hearted people when the hard hearted reader reads that poem then also sometimes you cannot catch the real meaning of that work of art another problem is doctrinal bonds the views and 
द आइडियाज द थाट्स और द बिलीव्स विच आर प्रेजेंटेड इन पोइट्री दे कुड बिकम अ फर्टाइल सोर्स ऑफ कन्फ्यूजन ओके समटाइम्स यू डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द द व्यूज एक्सप्रेस बाय द पोएम एंड समटाइम्स यू डो नॉट एग्री विद द व्यूज ऑफ द पोएट्स प्रेजेंटेड इन इज पोएम सो वेन यू डिस एग्री विद द व्यूज then also it creates confusion so you you, you sometimes uh, you start believing that it is not a great work of art why because you disagree with the doctrine doctrines which are presented by the poet in that poetry problem number 9 is technical presuppositions you know while see when sometime when something has once been done in a certain style we try to believe that everything should happen in that style only right if shakespeare has written sonnets in this particular style and if i love his style of writing sonnets then i knowingly or unknowingly you know i expect other poets that they should write poetry just like shakespeare in the same fashion in the same uh, same style so sometimes we are disappointed not to find the same fashion same style or manner of writing so technically uh, sometimes our knowledge of uh, poetry uh, creates a problem we believe that this is a true poetry but that is our personal belief which cannot be imposed on other poets so right? other poets have different fashions they have different styles of writing poetry problem number 10 is general critical preconceptions you know sometimes we are uh, misled by our preconceived literary theories like say for example if i believe in marxism then sometimes i try to analyze a poem from marxist point of view only and i fail to understand the poem from feminist point of view so uh, if i am a feminist sometimes you know what happens that i read the poem from a feminist point of view only and sometimes i fail to find out the marxism in that poem so uh, our knowledge or our belief in a particular popular theories also create problems so all in all there are 10 problems which are uh, which hinder or which create obstacles in understanding a work of art that is what he has presented i a richards has presented in practical criticism object the main objective of this book practical criticism was to encourage the students to concentrate on the words on the page so he believed that you read the words forget about the ideologies forget forget about the background of the poet uh, during which age he lived you forget about the cultural context of the poem what is more important is focus on the text so this is how new criticism begins you know this is how formalism also begins in the 20th century and the credit goes to i a richards because he was the first critic in english literature who gave this idea that words on the page that means text is more important than anything else okay other things are less important he said that the lesson of all criticism is that we have nothing to rely upon in making our choices but ourselves so there are no other factors uh, other factors should be ignored what is more important is how i personally read that poem the lesson of good poetry when we have understood it lies in the degree to which we can order ourselves so he talked about organized responses right so all in all let me conclude by uh, mentioning these several points major key points presented by i a richards in practical criticism number 1 he said that a true reader must keep himself away from the preconceived theories ideologies or philosophies i should keep my ideologies my knowledge of the world my theories 
okay my philosophy is away while reading a work of art number 2 the reader's ultimate aim must be to be ready for this organized response what is an organized response organized response means to keep yourself away from these 10 major problems or factors number 3 he said that the relation of the text to the author to cultural roots and background to other texts also must be uh, ignored okay they are uh, they but uh, uh, number 3 he said that the relation of the text to the author to cultural roots and background or to other texts are not rational properties of the poem they are not so much important okay number 4 he said that a poem ceases to be a public document poem is not a public document okay it can be experienced in isolation so what i understand i should read that poem uh, in isolation only without considering the ideologies the poet the knowledge of the poet the background his historical background the time period during which that particular poem was published and all and number 5 the meaning of the poem is determined by its reader okay so the meaning depends not on the text it depends on the reader so reader response theory also image emerges from these ideas explored by i a richards so all in all it is a wonderful contribution by i a richards practical criticism i have also uploaded another video on i a richards four kinds of meaning if you want to watch it you can go to my channel thank you for watching thank you